Hey guys and welcome back to the Compact Presario 4540. In this video we're going to be looking at that first Compact experience. We're going to take a look at what was installed on this computer when you bought it from the store. We're also going to see how the AMD K6 matches up against the Intel Pentium MMX. And for that we're going to be running some benchmarks on the machine. See if it was any match for your typical clone PC from back in the day. Look at some benchmark results. And fix those inevitable hardware issues that you encounter while working with these retro PCs. Now before we start I just wanted to show you a little bit about the boot process on this PC and how the BIOS looks like. So after that compact flash logo we can see some information on the CPU, memory, cache, the fixed disks and the CD-ROM. And when entering the setup utility, we can see that this is a Phoenix BIOS. It is very basic. I mean, you can configure stuff like, you know, the disk drives, the hard drives. There are very few settings, in fact, that you can control in terms of like memory timings. All of that is shielded away from you. Um, so yeah, a very basic uh, setup program. Obviously you can set like serial parallel ports, disable or enable the audio. Uh, there are some uh, security and power management features, but yeah, nothing too fancy here. But first things first, we've got the Compact Presario here with Windows 98 installed. But I had this idea of using a Compaq uh, Quick Restore disk that I found on archive.org and see if I could reinstall the machine to its factory default installation. And for that, we need to go back to Windows 95 because I found this Quick Restore CD from Compaq that should reinstall the computer back to its factory defaults with a Windows 95 operating system. So this is a bootable CD-ROM, which is the Compaq Quick Restore Utility version 3. It is a destructive restore, so everything will be wiped from the hard drive. And in order to do the restore, you need to enter a serial number that goes with your PC. Now I did find this sticker on the back of the PC, which contains what appears to be a Compaq serial number, but Unfortunately, this particular Compaq Quick Restore disk didn't accept that serial number. Now, this could also be due to the fact that this Restore CD wasn't meant for this particular model. But by changing four characters in the serial number, I was able to get it past the model verification. It did recognize it as a different Presario model, but I went ahead with it as I think the differences will be minimal and this should give me a very close experience much like you got when you first bought the system. So after the quick restore was done with formatting the hard drive it started copying files from the CD-ROM onto the hard drive and after a couple of minutes I was prompted to uh, remove the CD-ROM from the CD-ROM drive and restart the machine. And it's always nice to see that Microsoft Windows 95 splash screen as Windows 95 is booting. In the retro community we see a lot of usage of Windows 98 so you don't come across Windows 95 all that often. But here with this compact we do so we need to provide some user information, accept the license agreement and we need to enter our OEM number which I thought was kind of odd but I went ahead and dusted off my old Windows 95 certificate, entered the serial number and proceeded with the installation. It did require another restart where it kept on finding new hardware, most notably the 3Com networking card that was installed after market. So next up is just to configure some Windows settings and then it finalizes the Windows setups and we are launched in the Windows 95 desktop. And the first thing we see or hear in this case is this sound check just to verify that the hardware is up and running so we can confirm this and then we get greeted by this little compact animation here. 
Welcome to your new Compact Presario PC. For ease of use, performance, reliability, and quality, you've made a smart choice. Your Presario PC will open up new worlds in which to work, play, learn, and explore. First, you need to register your computer. Click on the rotating cube in the bottom corner of your screen if you're ready to begin. If you've never used a mouse before, simply slide it on a flat surface as shown to move the pointer on the screen. Position the pointer on the cube in the bottom corner of your screen and use your index finger to press and release the mouse button once. This is called a click. If your mouse doesn't seem to be working, please check to make sure it's properly connected to your computer. Now that we know where the mouse click is, we can finish up the registration of our Compact Presario computer and make use of all the goodies that Compact will send us after the registration. But unfortunately, we hit a little snag here because the computer is missing the modem which is required to do the registration online. So that's a bit of a bummer. Now finally we've arrived in the Windows 95 desktop, so let's explore some software here. We seem to have the SimCity 2000 Network Edition installed on this system. Now according to Wikipedia this was a rather short-lived version of SimCity 2000 which was only available online and was discontinued after about a year. So not really much chance of me getting this up and running, unfortunately. Now I did try, but unfortunately, despite the fact that I did have internet connectivity, I wasn't able to find a network server to start a SimCity 2000 networking game. So on to some productivity software. We have the mandatory Microsoft Works version 4.0 installed on this computer. This was a very popular package which was installed on lots of OEM PCs, kind of a cut down version of Microsoft Office obviously, which allowed you to do basic tasks like word processing, spreadsheets and presentations. In the multimedia section, we have QuickTime Movie Player. Let's load up a sample video here and see what it was like to consume some multimedia in 1996-1997. Just look at that high resolution video and listen to that stereo sound. And if you're a geek like me, you are probably interested in the compact diagnostics that will inspect your system and give you all of the technical information that you need about this system. For example, the fact that this is a 386. Now that seems a little bit off. At least it got the COM ports and the parallel ports right. Now Compaq was really pushing that online experience. For example, here it also shipped with The Palace, which was kind of an online chat community with avatars and lots of, lots of features. I think the thing is still around today. There are still people hosting Palace servers and there are still clients being developed for Windows and Mac and Linux. But we will conclude our trip down memory lane here. Now, as with lots of things in life, even in retro computing land, things don't always go as planned. And with this old hardware, there's a very high probability that things will start failing. As was the case here with my little compact desktop, because as I was launching Windows 95, all of a sudden I got this Windows protection error. So yeah, that's not good. And then I noticed as I was booting the computer into safe mode to kind of see what was going on, I got the following memory error. So most likely a bad memory stick. Easily fixed. 
On to the next problem, the quantum Bigfoot. While doing some benchmarking, and in particular I was running WinBench, all of a sudden the hard drive started failing on me. It appeared ever so briefly on the boot screen. It happened so fast, in fact, that I had to use my slow-mo camera here and capture this footage so that you could clearly see that there was a failure fixed disk zero. So yeah, it was really strange because the hard drive was still being detected by the Compact Presario. I could still see it in the BIOS, but I could not boot from it anymore. And to make matters worse, it took me three IDE hard drives in order to find one that I was able to format and continue with my benchmarking. But yeah, time for some benchmarking right now. We're going to be starting with DOS Bench, a collection of benchmarking utilities that run in MS-DOS because I want to compare this AMD K6 233 MHz CPU and see how it matches up against the Intel Pentium MMX, also clocked at 233 MHz. So this should be an interesting standoff between these two CPUs, direct competitors. Let's see who will win this little battle. Now, at first, I just wanted to see how this compact Presario machine would kind of stand up against a typical clone-based machine with an Intel Pentium MMX CPU. But then I thought, why don't I just put the Intel Pentium MMX also in the compact Presario and have a more direct comparison between the two CPUs. Now, the compact motherboard does support different CPU V cores. Currently, it's set to 3.2 volts for the AMD, but the Intel Pentium MMX is running at 2.8 volts. So we need to change jumper number three over here, put this open, and then we can insert the Intel Pentium MMX. We don't need to change the CPU bus rate because they are all running at 66 megahertz bus speed with a multiplier of three and a half. And the computer was able to boot with the Intel Pentium MMX without any issue. The CPU was detected properly. And even the compact diagnostics tool was able to recognize this as a Pentium with MMX, as opposed to a 386 with the AMD K6. So let's start with the benchmarking. And we will start with this Superscape benchmark. There are two versions, one for slow PCs and one for fast PCs. So I did a direct comparison between the Compact Presario with the AMD and then the clone machine with the Intel Pentium 233. And I added some other benchmarking results that you will see in the following graph. So let's take a look. Now for the benchmarks, I've set up five configurations. So the original Compact Presario with the AMD K6 233 MHz. Then I have a clone machine with an Intel Pentium 200 MMX. I have the same clone machine with an Intel Pentium 233 MMX. I then put the Intel Pentium 233 MHz in the Compact Presario. And I've also added an Intel Pentium 2 233 megahertz for comparison. And if we took out the first benchmark, we already see something quite extraordinary. Now the fast PC benchmark of this Superscape gives a very high result on the AMD K6. It's comparable to an Intel Pentium 2 in fact. Now in slow PC mode, I wasn't able to get any numbers on the Pentium 2, but in terms of the slow PC setting, the compact AMD K6 wasn't performing as well as the Pentium 233 MMX, but in fast PC mode, it was performing very well. Next up is Chris's 3D Benchmark. Now this one also has a version for slower PCs and a version for faster PCs. The faster PC version takes considerably longer to finish, but we are gonna be running both of them both on the Compact Presario with the AMD K6 and one time on the Intel clone machine with the Intel Pentium MMX CPU. Now again, all of the configurations here are pretty closely matched, but the AMD K6 does get the higher score in the lower resolution, but it is also able to keep up with the Intel Pentium MMX counterparts. 
Next up is the PC player benchmark. Again, there is a low resolution version running at 320 by 200, the one that you are seeing here. And there's also a high resolution version running at 640 by 480, which is a bit more demanding on the computer. So let's see how these run on the Compaq Presario and also on the Intel Pentium MMX clone machine. And look at the various results. And again, we're happy to see that the AMD K6 233 is performing very well compared to the Intel Pentium MMX. Even the Pentium 233 MMX is performing considerably lower than the Compaq Presario. And even when you put the Intel Pentium MMX inside the Presario, the AMD K6 is very much outperforming the Intel Pentium MMX. It only needs to leave behind the Intel Pentium 2 233 MHz, but only at a very slight margin. Now let's see if it will pass this first real test with Doom. Now, Intel CPUs are known to perform a lot better on, you know, 3D type games. However, Doom was one of those earlier 3D titles and uh, AMD performance didn't suffer all that much in this game as compared to Quake, for example, which was heavily optimized for Intel. So as you can see here, the performance on the uh, Doom benchmark for the AMD and the Intel isn't all that different. I mean, the AMD is perfectly capable of keeping up with the Intel Pentium 233, and it's basically an even match. Now, Quake, however, is a different story. Like I said, heavily optimized for Intel CPUs. You can clearly see that the AMD is kind of struggling a bit here to keep up a decent frame rate. Now, I can't really push it to high resolutions because I have a very limited video memory, but it's obvious that the Intel Pentium MMX is a winner here. You don't really need to see the benchmark results. You can actually just see it on the screen that it performs a lot better. But let's look at the graphs anyway. So as expected, the Compaq uh, AMD K6 loses out on even the Intel Pentium, which is clocked at only 200 megahertz. And it just keeps on getting worse and worse, especially when you go to the Intel Pentium 2. It just blows the AMD uh, out of the water. So no real competition when it comes to Quake. Now, if you look at the numbers of the Intel Pentium MMX 233 on the clone PC, as well as on the Compact Presario, the results are pretty much in line. So you don't lose a lot of performance just because this is a compact system. So that was also a bit of a surprise. Now let's look at some other utilities like Norton System Information. This also has a built-in benchmark utility that will check your CPU speed. And what we found here is that there was a humongous score for the AMD K6 II. If we plot it on a graph, you can see that it almost doubled the performance of the Intel Pentium. So not really sure what was going on here, but it was detected as a different CPU. A Cyrix 586 running at 394 megahertz. So perhaps that had something to do with it. And we see a similar thing with landmark system speed test where it is almost doubling the performance of the Intel Pentium MMX. So I would take these numbers with a little grain of salt. And to conclude, I also ran the most boring benchmark of them all, which is WinBench 99, which produces you know, zero visual output. It just runs a bunch of tests and no real surprises here as well. It was able to keep up and in some areas outperform the Intel Pentium MMX 233, but obviously the Pentium 2 233 took the best score here. And that wraps up this video. I hope you like this little comparison between the AMD K6 and the Intel Pentium MMX, two CPUs I am very fond of. I did want to try some 3DFX voodoo magic in this thing, but I was a bit worried about this 75 watt power supply. Not really sure that it would be able to take on uh, the additional load that the Voodoo would bring and the additional CPU processing that these more 3D intensive games would uh, require. 
So for now, I'm just going to stick with Doom or Quake. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing to the channel, giving this a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell to make sure that you are notified of new videos. And I hope to see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.